it so hard You, but we've been through I miss you And you can't lie, you miss me too If I roll through So I got a comment asking me to elaborate on the Aaliyah situation since I said that Jay-Z took her out. I guess that people are curious to know, you know, the roles maybe in her that people played. And I already went over Jay-Z's motive about why he did what he did to her. She for one made him look crazy in front of his friends and in the public. Two, she declined him People with a lot of pride do not like to be turned down. And Jay-Z also went through this with his best friend back in the day and he ended up being his best friend. So Jay-Z has a very crazy history and he knows that and he tells us that all the time in his music. But I finally understand, you know, all the words in Beyonce's songs are words that Aaliyah used in her music. Jay-Z talks about things in his song about what he went through possibly with Aaliyah that I believe he is talking about. And I feel like Aaliyah's album talks about Jay-Z. When they're in the industry, artists, they make albums responding. It seems to be more powerful than any other album because it has a significance to it. It tells you everything you need to know. The reason why I think Jay-Z did it is because for one, like I said, well, we already went over that. This comment also said that people are not looking deep enough into Barry Hankerson. Barry Hankerson was a very private person. It's not really too much on him. It's not like he was in the public eye and he had a life in the spotlight. So you don't really know anything. He doesn't have music saying it. I mean, he does have projects. I highly doubt that they have any significance to what happened to Aaliyah. Yes, I do think her uncle still did it. He let it happen. He was told by somebody that Aaliyah would be going down when she hit the Bahamas. That was her final place. He decided to go out and take out an insurance policy on Aaliyah so that he would not be blamed for what happened to her in the Bahamas. And I'm pretty sure this is the only time he did that because there's just no stories about him doing it before. So he definitely knew. It could have even been Jay-Z who told him what his plans were. Barry Hankerson knew that he would get such a big amount of money off of Aaliyah and he had created the record label so all her music was his. And they say that artists are worth more than alive. That's why he did what he did. So he took out the insurance policy and after she died, he didn't get blamed for it. He didn't get investigated and he received 90 million and did not use any of that 90 million to pay for her funeral. He's like the the head honcho's assistant. Jay-Z is number one and the uncle is number two. Now, don't get me wrong. I still think that Barry Hankerson has something to do with it. He's just a very creepy guy and it's just sad he would want to let this happen to his niece. And I think everybody who had parts in her death regrets that because they're struggling to be what they used to be when she was here and she was better left alive than I think they finally realized that it's finally hitting them. It's just gonna always live with them forever. Now to pretty much sum it up how I feel like everybody played their roles, Jay-Z is the one who did that. He came up with the plan to end her because she did not want to go through with his master plan and he couldn't have you know, a successful woman in an industry and then him try to rise. And then what makes things worse is that she, Aaliyah, the girl he wanted, got with his friend that was also a part of what they had going on, which was, what, Rockefeller? So if she would have got with Damon, married him, they would have been a power couple of Rockefeller and there wouldn't have been no way for Jay-Z to take that from them. He would have been Damon. But like I said, again, Jay-Z has a lot of pride. So his pride got in the way and he did not want to be at the bottom. He wanted to be at the top. He wanted to be respected. He wanted power and he sought out to do it. But he wanted to do it with Aaliyah. She turned him down because he was too possessive and too controlling and he was too focused on the wrong things. It wasn't really that serious. Aaliyah was a very natural girl. She just wanted to sing. She loved it. It was just meant for her to do this naturally and not knock everybody down. She loved everyone. So Jay-Z is the one who probably told Hype because 
Jay-Z is pictured in these all-white parties alongside Hype Williams. So I'm pretty sure they were friends, right? They could have got together. And listen, I said this before. She was leaving her people behind. So they would have a motive to want to help Jay-Z. And being the intelligent and knowledgeable dude that he was, he probably told them some lies like, hey, I'm going to do this to her, you know, so I can rise and we going to, you know, come up together. I'm going to have this and y'all going to have that and we're going to all be happy. But what you don't know about a prideful person uh, who also has knowledge, who's smart, who's well planned out, well thought out, is that they will snake you because Jay-Z has been snaked his whole life. So why would he trust? He's been snaked by his friend. I don't know what the story was about it something about his friend declined to do something jay-z got mad and stabbed him Aaliyah turned him down he got mad he her and then barry hankerson he probably went out to barry hankerson and hype hype he's always around when somebody passes away he was there when left eye passed away he was photographing her and it's funny because left eye was not in the u.s either and she was trying to get her life on the right path she was trying to become something bigger on her own and she wasn't listening to them and so you know hype he's just there for the money that's it if i gotta hit somebody and you need help and i get paid what i want it's raps i'll help you i'll take them out there and make sure everything goes accordingly jay-z probably went to barry hankerson because jay-z and Aaliyah were friends they were hanging out a lot i'm pretty sure he met her parents and her uncle like i said she was leaving barry hankerson why wouldn't barry hankerson help jay-z Jay-Z probably went to Barry Hankerson in hype and was like, listen, this is the plan because Jay-Z always plans out his little things that he wants, you know, to happen. And he was like, you know what? If I don't do something now, she's, you know, going to be on top. I'm a prideful person. You don't get my back like that. So I have a short temper. This is what it's going to be. So whatever it is you got to do, Barry, you do that. So Barry was like, okay. You know, she leaving me anyway. I'm gonna be broke because I got this information from a video about JoJo. She was talking about it, but they said that, and she was also signed to Barry Hankerson. That's crazy, right? And I feel like her situation is similar to Aaliyah. Sorry for the different appearance. I got on a totally different hat, but uh, there was somebody arguing outside and they ended up a bunch of teenagers oh my goodness so i'm back what i was saying is jojo's situation is more like Aliyah's, but they say when barry he had rights to jojo's music but once jojo started doing movies he didn't get royalties from that because that was something he didn't own Aliyah was doing everything that was going to pull in money just with her and then allegedly i don't know it was said she was doing six albums with him I think she was gonna leave him. I think her contract was gonna be up with her uncle. Although she had signed to do six albums, that's probably why he was making her record so much. You know, Jay got with the uncle, told him the plans, told the uncle to do what he needed to do. Then Jay-Z probably went to Hype, and Hype was the man to get her to the destination, to prevent her from coming home safely. He was orchestrating it while it was happening in real life, while Jay-Z sat back and, you know what I'm saying, watched. Hype went down there to do that to Aaliyah. And it explains 100% why Hype took her plane. Hype and Aaliyah go way back. They had a picture from 1996 or 1997. I personally feel like in there's a connection with Jay-Z in Aaliyah's situation. Jay-Z and Beyonce, they are obsessed with jets. They're obsessed with flying and... <clears throat> like those people like when i hear about jets i automatically think about jay-z and them they, that's all they ever take pictures on is a jet and Aaliyah, she was having trouble getting airplanes and of course jay-z would think about oh let me do this airplane thing she travels a lot and she's filming this video so it would look like an accident he got this little rigged plane that had defects or a bomb on it and he probably told hype make sure she gets on this plane Make sure she's comfortable going out there. She'll think everything's fine. But on the way back, she's gonna get into that plane. But do not let her get on this plane. Don't let her get on a commercial plane either or a private jet that's bigger. 
make her get on this rigged plane. And so they thought it would be easy and that she would be dumb enough to get on a small plane. But someone, it was another comment, he mentioned something about Jay-Z allegedly drugging Beyonce. Isn't that what happened to Aaliyah? She was drugged. She, well, first she turned down getting on the plane, which ruined the plan. Went back to the cab, took a little nap. Somebody came and gave her a headache pill and it put her right out, unnormally. Somebody carried her onto that plane. They made sure her hype and Fatima as a team while they were down in the Bahamas made sure she got on that plane. She did, went up, it crashed. Guess who was the first on the scene? Derek Lee and Fatima, out of all people. Fatima was granted the wish to call Diane and let her know her baby was gone. Fatima. When they were getting on the boat to do the last scene for Rock the Boat, Fatima had these papers in her hand and she was walking like they were behind schedule and she was nervous and serious. She looked like she was up to no good. She was orchestrating everything too. And it's sad because Aaliyah used to stay nights with Fatima. Derek Lee, I think he was involved. I feel like he was also there to make sure things fell through. They said that the schedules were changed three nights prior or the following night all of a sudden. And it has something to do with Gina Smith. Just things were changing. A lot of people play different roles. Now, I have not looked into that yet, but I know 100% that her people wasn't her people. I respect Mary J. Blige for even saying that because that could have put her at risk. As dangerous as Jay-Z was, she got on 106 in Park not too long after Aaliyah passed and told us this, Kidada. I think Kidada knew. A lot of people knew Aaliyah's faith. That's why Kidada did not go down to the Bahamas with her. That's why Damon did not go to the Bahamas with her. Her parents weren't there, and I'm not saying they weren't there because they didn't want to be in a way. That knew, or maybe the uncle came along and was like, hey, this is your time to do it. Her mom and dad are going to be at an appointment, and her brother is going to be in Australia. She's going to be alone. Let her parents know she'll be safe and she'll have somebody to go with her. She ended up going alone. It was a well planned out. If her people wasn't her people, which they weren't, that's why it fell through so good. Like it happened. There is no way that would have happened if her real people were there. Diane was there. She would have been like, my baby's not getting on this plane. We are not getting on this plane. Diane wouldn't have went to sleep. No disrespect to Aaliyah. She was just very exhausted and she needed somebody in her circle that was wide awake but she was so tired, she was just exhausted, you know? And they was making her get up early. They wanted these clips for some odd reason. And it's funny because they put particular signs within this music video. They put skull and bones, they put a dove, and the letter A. Another thing, when I got into uh, figuring out what really happened to Aaliyah, I was looking at the fact that Lenny Kravitz has sent her a plane because no one was helping her and she was having problems finding a plane. They said he has sent her his private jet and I was like, that's very nice of him. But now that I'm looking at it in a different perspective, why didn't he say anything in that very moment? Why wouldn't he have been mad that someone else took his jet when he sent it for a particular person? Why does he continue to refuse to speak out about the matter. One little mistake, him not making sure that his jet got to her, got her killed. Well, he kind of has blood on his fingers too. He's gonna be a part of this investigation. If he's not, he should. They should ask him questions. And I blame Damon too, because he told her to just do it. And I know that was on the way down there. She told her boyfriend, I'm scared to get on this plane. She told her brother, I'm scared to get on this plane. Nobody thought to tell her to rent a private plane or to wait or to come get her. Who do you really point the blame at? Her own boyfriend couldn't even send her a jet. He just told her to do it. I thought that was very rude when he said that because that, that's how you see it. This comment also alleges that Damon beat up Hype Williams for taking the jet from Aaliyah 
And he also says that Damon is a fighter. I don't know about all of that and I don't know how true that is. So I'm not going to speak too much on it or give my opinion. But I do want to say that Damon is fishy too. I don't feel for him at all. He didn't care. But at the end of the day, you have to look at the bigger picture. Yeah, Barry Hangerson and Hype Williams definitely has one of the biggest roles in Aaliyah's death. But Jay-Z was the god of orchestrating. He was the one who came up with the plan. And it's very obvious. If you listen to his music, he's always talking about Bonnie and Clyde. Wasn't Aaliyah talking about Bonnie and Clyde? We can go to foreign lands. Jay-Z loves Paris. Aaliyah was in Paris. It's not a coincidence. They got pregnant with Blue Ivy in Paris. Hmm. Jay-Z is weird. They're all weird, but Jay-Z is the head honcho. Her uncle is the next. Hype Williams is the third. Fatima is the fourth. Derek Lee is the fifth. Kidada is the sixth. Damon, because I think he knew he was the closest to Aaliyah. You're gonna know everything your girlfriend's doing or your partner is doing. Everyone's wrong here and I don't trust anyone. I think that for Diane and her father, Michael, someone told them that she would be going down there with someone she would feel comfortable with. I don't know if it was Kidada that they said she would be going down there with. I don't know who, but clearly they felt comfortable enough to continue their activities and not go with their daughter. What were they told? Of course, Barry has something to do with it because Diane ended up falling out with her own brother and taking him to court trying to get the rights to Leah's music and she knows that he should not be in control of her music. She knows what these people did. And I feel her when she said no one breathed the same air as her daughter. I totally understand because so many people just did her dirty. And she was just so kind and open-hearted. Her people turned on her. Jay-Z turned on her because he couldn't have her as the queen of the industry and him being the king of the industry. I'm going to come back when I do more research or more notes on different parts that they played in her because as of right now, I have yet to put any information together from my thoughts. So I really appreciate your comment. I hope this video was helpful to this comment. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you guys in my next video. Stay crazy. So what? Uh, you, what we've been through.